If you uh, tell your company, I am willing to work without the air conditioner, they would be too glad. <laughs> it would save them lot of money, <laughs> isn't it? And uh, it would be good for you in so many ways. But, <laughs> but now the city is not in that kind of condition where if you open your window, breeze will not come, smoke will come, smell will come, dust will come. So, it's good, convenient. But you don't have to sit here twenty-four hours, only for work. You can take a walk whenever you can. And anyway, seventy-two percent is water, twelve percent is earth, only six percent is air. In that six percent air, air is not always in the breath. Out of the six percent air that is here, it is only less than one percent which you are breathing. Rest is simply there. For some people it's concentrated in the brain <laughs> But otherwise in every cell in the body there is air. So when you say air, it's not just the breath. Six percent air is in every cell in the body. Just remove it a little bit from the brain, it'll be good. It's good if it's in the lungs, in the heart and the muscles. They function better if there is oxygen, you know? You know this. If you're oxygen deprived, muscles become rigid because this needs air, otherwise it will not work. So, water is seventy-two percent. <laughs> so maximum care should be taken about the water because it's seventy-two percent. If you are going to an examination, suppose uh, it is like this, let's say you're going for physics examination. You have water, earth, this, that, but just the water subject is for seventy-two marks. Naturally you spend more time reading about water, isn't it? Studying water, yes or no? Air is only six percent, you may not study because you are okay with ninety-four. Water you must study because it's seventy-two percent. You must take enormous care about the water because it's seventy-two percent and it has tremendous memory. If I open this water or even without opening, if I say something to this water, it remembers. There has been lot of experiments in this direction. So, uh, if you take this water from wherever the waterworks is and pump it to your house, let's say it went through fifty bends, forced, pumped forcefully with a certain force, which naturally is done, and you are living on twelfth floor of the apartment, so further forced up. Now they are saying, if it goes through fifty bends, about sixty percent of the water has turned poisonous. Immediately when it comes in the tap, if you take it and immediately drink it, it will work as poison in your system. If you take it and hold it for some time, it will undo itself again. Because the poisoning is not chemical, it is molecular. Molecular changes are happening, no chemical change is happening. This is why Traditionally, your grandmother always told you, always you must gather the water 
keep it overnight in your house in a properly cleaned vessel with vibhuti and kunkum on it and one flower on it, yes or no? In traditional homes, only tomorrow morning you drink it. Not as soon as it comes inside your house, you don't drink it because it carries all kinds of memories. In very traditional homes, people every day do puja to the water pot, yes? And you never drink the water as soon as it comes, you keep it, give it enough time to undo itself from whatever nonsense it has gathered so that it is suitable for you when you drink it. Water you must take care because it's seventy-two percent. It's more, it's first class, you know, more than passing mark. Next thing is food because that's the earth, twelve percent, still substantial, isn't it? So how food goes into you, from whose hands it comes to you, how you eat it, how you approach it, all these things are important. Then comes your air, six percent. In that six percent, only one percent or less is your breath. Rest is happening in so many other ways. And it's important, especially if you have children, at least once a month, take them out somewhere, not to the damn cinema, again breathing everybody's nonsense. <laughs> the air gets affected just by the sounds. And the intentions and the emotions, all the rubbish that's happening on the screen and all the rubbish that's reflecting in human minds of violence, of sex, of greed, of this and that is affecting that limited air in that hall in a tremendous way. So instead of taking them to the cinema, take them to the river, teach them how to swim, climb a mountain, where is mountain Sadhguru? Himalayas is so far away. Even a small hill is a mountain for your boy, yes? Even a little rock, just go climb and sit on one of them. Children will enjoy it immensely, they will become fit, you will become fit. And above all, your body and mind will function differently. And above all, you are in touch with the creator's creation which is the most important thing. Not your own rubbish that you made, yes it's comfortable right now, but it's not everything. So instead of going to the restaurant, instead of going to the cinema, instead of going somewhere else like that, at least once a month, it doesn't cost anything. Huh? Doesn't cost anything. You can take your rice and aukai and go and eat there. Anyway you have it, you don't have to Spend money on this. Even better, if you don't want to spend money even on the bus or car, all of you cycle. Just three kilometers, five kilometers outside Hyderabad, sit on one rock, just spend time there, feel the sun. It's very important you get some sun, air, good water. Come back, you are doing Bhuta Shuddhi in a very natural way. It is not the ultimate type of Bhuta Shuddhi, but you are doing some Bhuta Shuddhi. This is what I was saying just now. If you take care of food, water, air is not always in your hands because you are living in a city. But water and food you can take care. And what kind of fire burns within you, that also you can take care. Sunlight has not become impure, isn't it? Get some sunlight every day, please. Get some sun on your body every day because sunlight is still pure, isn't it? Nobody can fortunately contaminate it. And what kind of fire burns within you? Is it the fire of greed, fire of hatred, fire of resentment, fire of anger, fire of love, fire of compassion? What kind of fire burns within you? You take care of that, then you don't worry about your physical and mental well-being. It's taken care of.